Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everyone. The hour of 10 o'clock having arrived. Um, I call our meeting of January 14th, 2020 to order. Our first meeting of the new year. So good to see everybody back here. And with that, I would like to ask Mr. Sam Tornatore, would you be kind enough to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing as I invite Imam Ibrahim Dar Aswa from the Islamic Center of Wheaton to lead us in invocation. Peace be upon you all. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ ورب ربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم صدق الله العظيم In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the entirely and the especially merciful all praise is due to Allah, Lord of the Lords and Lord of the Worlds, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful, the master of the day of judgment. It is you and you only we worship and you only the one that we seek help from. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those upon whom you have bestowed favor not of those who have invoked your anger or of those who are astray. Recite in the name of your Lord who created, created man from cleaning substance. Recite and your Lord is the most generous who taught by the pen tell man that which he knew not. Thank you very much. Thank you, Imam Dardasawi. That was beautiful. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Chaplain? Here. Covert? Here. Desart? Here. Deciani? Here. Eckhoff? Here. Elliot? Here. Hart? Here. Healy? Here. Krajewski, Here. Larson, Here. Noonan, Ozog, Pachowski, Renahan, Here. Rutledge, Here. Selman, Here. Tornatori, Here. Zay, Here. 16. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, on the order of Chairman's report, uh, we have a couple of proclamations, pretty special uh, proclamation today, first and foremost. 
uh, Martin Luther King birthday, I'd like to invite Regina, Brent, and the whole crew that was here earlier. Please, if you join me up here at the podium, um, we have some fabulous, uh, really distinctive guests of honor here with us today. I'm so pleased and honored. Please come on up and join me. While they're making their way up here to the podium, I can share a few uh, of my remarks. This is a great day. So today we celebrate the birthday of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, ahead of the official federal holiday on January 20th. Um, this is a day set aside to not only recall Dr. King's exceptional life and accomplishments, but to also honor Dr. King's call to service in our community. Uh, today we are uh, really honored to host several special guests who have heard and honor that call. We have Unity Partnerships, Regina Brent is here. Um, Thomas Armstrong, Thomas Armstrong of Naperville, who uh, who we, um, we were chatting with earlier, worked with Medgar Evers and was involved in civil rights protests in Mississippi. Uh, we have uh, Mrs. Glenette Tilly Turner, uh, who is a scholar, a historian, educator, and a national expert on the Underground Railroad. Um, just fascinating wealth of knowledge that she has about the history of DuPage County, a proud history of abolitionists and, and folks that risked their lives um, to work with the Underground Railroad, particularly as it intersected, uh, influenced Midwestern and Illinois communities. Uh, Pastor James Miller is here from DuPage AME Church, Pastor Miller. Um, and uh, I want to thank all of you for joining us today to celebrate the remarkable life of Dr. King. We have Pastor James Shannon is here, um, People's Community Church at Glen Ellen. So I have a proclamation I'd like to read, if I may, please. And uh, then I'm going to ask um, Mrs. Glenette Tilly Turner if she'd offer a couple of remarks. And then I'm going to turn it over to Regina and she, she can, um, and Pastor, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. So with that, uh, whereas Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. devoted his life to the advancement of civil rights and public service, he believed in a nation of freedom and justice for all. Um, and challenge all citizens to help build a more perfect union and live up to the purpose and potential of America. And whereas, during his lifetime, Dr. King encouraged all Americans to serve their neighborhoods and their communities. And whereas, in 1973, Illinois became the first state to make Dr. King's birthday a state holiday, and the residents of Illinois honor Dr. King's legacy each year on the third Monday in January. And whereas, in 1994, Congress initiated the King Day of Service, a nationwide effort to transform the federal holiday uh, honoring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. into a day of community service grounded in Dr. King's teachings that helps solve social problems while focusing on bringing people together and breaking down the barriers that have divided us as a nation. And whereas hundreds of thousands of volunteers in cities and towns across the nation participate in King Day service projects in all 50 states, and whereas the King Day of Service, which falls on January 20th this year, is a time for the people of Illinois to recognize Dr. King's teachings on advancing quality, equality, and opportunity for all by contributing their own time and talents in a day of service. And whereas the King Day of Service provides an excellent opportunity to encourage each citizen to take part in service that will benefit communities and neighborhoods and provide a fitting memorial to the life of Martin Luther King, Jr. And now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Daniel J. Cronin, Chairman of the Board, members of the Board, County Board, do hereby declare January 20th, 2020, as Martin Luther King Day, um, Martin Luther King Jr. Day and urge residents to honor the memory of Dr. King and put his teachings into action and to find ways to give back to their community. I'll entertain a motion. Seconded. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Enacted this 14th day of January 2020. Thank you so much. Uh, all of you, Regina, you're just awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mrs. Glenette Tilly Turner, please. Thank you. 
When our family moved to Wheaton in 1968, a new neighbor made a chance remark. She said that the Underground Railroad had operated here. Now, I've been fascinated by tales of the Underground Railroad ever since I was in grade school. I first learned of Harriet Tubman. But everything I'd ever heard or read uh, talked about Underground Railroad activity in states east of Illinois. So I couldn't imagine uh, that my neighbor knew what she was talking about, but she made me curious. And so I thought, well, it won't hurt to go to the DuPage Historical Museum and prove to myself that she doesn't know what she's talking about. <laughs> However, to my amazement, the curator, whose name was Margaret Dutton, uh, said that um, there was no whole book about the Underground Railroad in DuPage County, but there were a couple local history books that made reference to anti-slavery activity here. Well, that was like putting a peb throwing a pebble into a puddle of water. You know, it just made me want to know more and more, and uh, it set me on a, a lifelong quest. In the intervening years, I had conducted research on the Underground Railroad here and el elsewhere in Illinois, served as an advisor to the National Park Service, received the National Underground Railroad Network to Freedom's highest award, and appeared on C-SPAN during the Lincoln-Douglas debates, wrote the Underground Railroad essay <coughs> in the Encyclopedia of Chicago, and be called <laughs> the go-to person on this topic by the Chicago Tribune. So that made me feel like a big girl. <laughs> the Underground Railroad in DuPage County is the uh, first uh, book, the first publication, and as you can see, it's kind of a King Code special, but uh, not really, you know, formally uh, published. But um, uh, later, uh, I, it was followed by uh, this full-length work on the Underground Railroad in Illinois. I learned that there were so many places in Illinois that were involved in the Underground Railroad, but starting in DuPage, you know, just really <coughs> led to learning more and more and more. And being a teacher in my first life, as a matter of fact, I had the pleasure of a, a young woman who was in my first grade, who, who I taught in first grade, uh, who's uh, our guest today. Um, but being a teacher, I couldn't resist putting in a chapter about ways of teaching the Underground Railroad, you know, through art, music, science, and all the subjects in the curriculum. And then uh, even uh, 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 designing a, a little uh, simulation game. Uh, then years uh, later, other Underground Railroad publications came. This is a, a chapter book um, that, you know, where a family has the uh, it makes an escape and the kids have an adventure. Uh, this is the, um, an apple for Harriet Tubman. I had the opportunity to interview a great niece of Harriet Tubman's and learn this unique story about her life. And then this is the, um, of, about uh, Underground Railroad destination in Florida. You know, we hear of Canada as being the promised land, but uh, for people in the Deep South, uh, Florida was. Uh, just a minute, I'm supposed to be talking on fast forward. Um, uh, to my great, um, well, excuse me, I've had wonderful adventures in the course of this study. They range from crawling in secret hiding places to interviewing Harriet Tubman's great niece and traveling to Texas with the staff of the Smithsonian's African American History Museum. My great disappointment is that schools have not incorporated this fascinating chapter of local history to the extent that I would have wished or anticipated. For if students become aware that every time they travel on Ogden Avenue, cross the DuPage River, or ride the Metro train to Chicago, they're retracing the Underground Railroad route. This knowledge will deepen their sense of place in a way that nothing else could. It seems like such a missed opportunity not to fully take advantage of this unique chance to develop their connection to the history that happened here. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Pat.
Pastor Miller from DuPage AME Church, and I am honored to stand in this hall with these American heroes. I want to thank you and Chairman Cronin to stand with this, probably the best scholar on the Underground Railroad internationally, internationally acclaimed. This preacher who was a member and was pastored by Dr. King as a boy. This gentleman who risked his life in Mississippi to work with Medgar Evers told us how they didn't even know where they were going to teach people to vote until they got there. They'd meet, it was so clandestine. The history, these heroes, and I don't know anyone other than Regina Brent who can get on the phone and get 30 police chiefs together. <laughs> she had me pray at one of her meetings. I walked in and saw all those badges. I wanted to make sure every ticket was paid up. <laughs> <laughs> I was um, appointed to do page in October of 1989. We had a funeral in December. A small church across the tracks from Billy Graham Center there on Crescent Wheaton. And one of, had a pastor visiting from southern Illinois, and he asked us, what are you all doing for King's holiday? I was new, and I asked the other pastors there. There was no public celebration of Dr. King in DuPage County in 1990. In 1991, we had the first celebration, and it has grown to an ecumenical and interfaith, and it'll be celebrated next uh, Monday night at Gary United Methodist. They're holding the service this year in Wheaton. Now here we stand, these 30 years later, with so many breakfasts and things that we have in this county, and here we are being honored by you. I guess that's about one of the shortest sermons. I'll close it out in the way I hope I send you. There used to be a commercial that said uh, what I think is appropriate for today. We've come a long way, baby, to get where we've got today. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I just have to say, when I return here, I feel like I'm coming home. I've spent many years with you, working with you, and it has been an honor and a pleasure. I appreciate your <coughs> services regarding the African American community. It's like Dr. King said, if we don't all stand as brothers and sisters, we will perish as fools. And I promise you, and I dedicate my life to the services as a volunteer in DuPage County to meet all of you in the middle to make sure that we have a safer, a better, and more united community. And I want to thank you, Chairman, all the time for your great efforts. I don't know any other governmental leadership that has worked with the African community as much as Chairman Cromanen. So thank you so much. I love you. Happy New Year's to everyone. Okay, moving along, um, we have a um, second uh, presentation here, um, and if I may invite uh, Member Chaplin to join me up here at the podium. 
Uh, each year we offer a proclamation that seeks to raise awareness of an illness that comes on suddenly, usually strikes young people and causes a host of unusual symptoms that can be very dangerous. One of the members of our board, Liz Chaplin, has had personal experience with this as her daughter suffered from this disease, Kawasaki disease. Later this month, uh, January 26th, is Kawasaki Disease Awareness Day around the nation, and we have a proclamation declaring our participation. So I'm going I'm to read this, and then I'm going to turn it over to Member Chaplin, please. So whereas DuPage County recognizes Kawasaki disease as a serious illness characterized by inflammation of blood vessels throughout the body, primarily affecting young children, and can lead to permanent heart disease, lifelong aneurysms, stent placement, heart transplant, um, skin disorders and childhood anxiety, whereas Kawasaki disease, more commonly known as KD, is the number one cause of permanent heart disease in children and is diagnosed in approximately 5,000 U.S. children annually who are primarily under the age of eight. And whereas recent instances of young adults suffering heart attacks in their 20s and 30s show evidence of old aneurysms and a missed diagnosis of KD as a child, and whereas the American Heart Association, the World Health Federation, the National Institute of Health recognize the need for proper and timely diagnosis, education, and treatment of KD, and whereas the lack of public knowledge and understanding of the disease plays a significant role in the overwhelming numbers of undiagnosed and untreated cases of KD, and the dissemination of inaccurate, misleading information contributes to the obstacles preventing diagnosis and treatment of the disease. And whereas there's a need to educate healthcare professionals, parents, and the general public about the disease, particularly since people could be unknowingly at risk. And whereas studies by the Kawasaki Disease Research Center consistently reveal that through proper and comprehensive diagnosis and treatment, the symptoms and effects of KD can be substantially decreased and quality of life for the individual can be improved. And so there now for be it resolved that I, Daniel G. Cronin, Chairman of the Board, County Board members do hereby designate January 26 as the National Kawasaki Disease Awareness Day and encourage DuPage County residents to find out more about the signs and symptoms in order to seek the appropriate treatment and care. I'll entertain a motion. Seconded. All those in favor say aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Enacted this 14th day of January 2020. Thank you. Great. Thank Liz. you yeah, here you go. You. Please. Thank you. So, thank you. Thanks. Um, so, as the chairman said, Kawasaki disease affects near, uh, between five and 6,000 children in the United States a year. 25% of those children um, go either undiagnosed or they're diagnosed late and they end up with permanent heart damage or sometimes that leads to death. Um, so as I mentioned, Kawasaki is a swelling inflammation um, in the arteries throughout the body. It primarily affects children. So I know we have some young members here who have small children. We might have some members here who are grandparents or maybe grandparents and people in the audience. You have uh, young children in your neighborhood. Um, it's so important to know the signs and symptoms of this disease because getting treatment, timely treatment, um, is what helps save these children. So Kawasaki disease also affects um, glands that swell during the infection, uh, your skin, your uh, mucous membranes inside the nose, mouth, and throat as well. Signs of Kawasaki disease can be very scary, an extremely high fever that uh, can't, doesn't even come down with medication, uh, peeling, skin peeling off your kid's fingers and uh, their toes uh, can be very frightening. But again, with timely treatment, uh, your child can be healthy. So the signs and symptoms that appear, there's three stages. The first stage is at very high fever. The second is extremely red eyes, conjunctivitis without the pus. Um, a rash all on the main part of their body. Red and dry cracked lips, a swollen tongue. Uh, swollen eyes, swollen palms of the hands and feet and um, swollen lymph nodes, um, especially on one side of the neck or other, and extreme irritability. So if you see a child that's suffering from one or two of these symptoms with a high fever, let their parents know to get them into their doctor um, as soon as they can. In the second phase of the disease, uh, the children, they have peeling of the skin on their hands and feet, as I mentioned. Um, 
They have joint pain, they have diarrhea, they vomit, they have abdominal pain. It's a very um, uncomfortable uh, disease. And in the third stage, they're in recovery. And the signs and symptoms start to go away, and uh, it can take as long as eight weeks or longer for kids to get their strength back. So it does take a lot out of the children. So again, treating Kawasaki disease in, um, within 10 days of that fever is the key that really reduces the lasting heart damage. Um, and the treatments include high-dose aspirin and um, gamma goblin, which is an intravenous uh, drug that can lower uh, the reduce the risk of uh, coronary artery uh, problems. And complications, if it's not found early, like I mentioned, is um, inflammation of the blood vessels of the heart that supply uh, blood to the heart, um, inflammation of the heart mu uh, muscle, heart valve problems, and um, sometimes it can even cause death. So no one knows what causes Kawasaki disease. Uh, they know it's not contagious from person to person. There's been a number of theories of the cause of the disease, such as a bacteria, viruses, or maybe even environmental factors, but none has been proven. Um, and certain genes may even make a child susceptible to Kawasaki disease. So um, just really, the 26th is the Kawasaki Awareness Day. If you guys can maybe share a link or look at the website. I had uh, flyers, but I forgot to pass them out that shows the sign and symptoms. That would be great. And also, on um, Wednesday, February 19th, the DuPage County Health Department is going to have a Children's Environmental Health Summit from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. at uh, the Glendale uh, Lakes Golf Course. So that might be a great summit for um, us to all, all turn to. So I really appreciate, appreciate the resolution and the um, help in uh, spreading the word on Kawasaki disease. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, moving on to our chairman's remarks. Um, Today marks our first meeting of the new year, 2020. Isn't that nice? Um, we had a very strong board turnout for the 630 Chamber event last Wednesday, uh, thanks to the members uh, who attended. That was very thoughtful and uh, supportive of our mission here as a county. Um, during that event each year, I, I, I try to provide a snapshot of what's going on here at the county. And um, I was pleased to be able to report many positive developments, uh, including a low county, uh, countywide unemployment rate, significant economic development uh, at the DuPage Business Center in West Chicago, and on the important progress we make each year to provide jobs to our well-educated DuPage workforce. Um, as I told the audience last Wednesday, at the 630 Chamber event, I'm really proud of our accomplishments, and uh, it's a team effort. Um, I'm energized in this new year to uh, tackle the issues and challenges that lie ahead. I'm mindful that part of the reason DuPage is a model uh, county government is because we are dedicated to the notion of professionalism and continuous improvement. And um, this dedication is exemplified uh, by our professional staff. Uh, please join me in, um, in always, um, you know, making sure that we recognize and support the staff. I think we're very blessed that we have some real pros here. And um, so on that note, uh, I'd like to point out to you that uh, uh, I'd like you to give a special congratulations to our transportation director, uh, Chris Snyder. There he is over there. Very humble man, kind of keep his head down over there. But uh, last week, I was really proud to nominate him to serve as chair of CMAP's Transportation Committee, Chicago Metropolitan Area for Planning. It's a significant organization, and the chair of the Transportation Committee is a big job and a lot of responsibility, especially now with uh, all the capital projects and, and uh, what's happening in Springfield and the federal level. Uh, they turn to someone with wisdom and experience and talent, and that is none other than our Chris Snyder. So it was a unanimous vote of support. Uh, this honor reflects not only his leadership and expertise, but reinforces the notion that we have leaders uh, here in DuPage that are respected um, across the profession, across the region, across the state. And so congratulations, Chris.
That concludes my remarks. We do have a few folks seeking recognition um, in the order of public comment. Um, and we welcome people from the public. We're all members of the public. But um, we welcome uh, folks to come here, taxpayers, citizens, to share their thoughts. We do ask that you observe and respect our rules. And, um, and so we would ask that your remarks do not exceed three minutes in length. Um, and with that, uh, first up, first and foremost, we have, I'm looking for Dr. Jorgensen and Steve Fixler. Where, oh, there they are. There you go. Our coroner, our uh, mighty you. coroner. And Steve, and Fixler. Our Steve Fixler is the head veterans. of the veterans. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We'd like to come to you with our yearly announcement of our ninth annual Stand up here. Ninth annual DuPage Veterans uh, Foundation fundraiser. Um, it'll be May 2nd of this year, and on that day, uh, Mr. John Calamos empties his private hangar out of his $80 million worth of planes and gives us uh, the space. We then, on Friday afternoon, set this all up for a uh, incredible event the following day. Um, we have two goals on this on this fun, or this event. Number one is to honor our living uh, veterans. Uh, with that said, we have every year had over a hundred uh, living veterans who come, and we honor them with uh, free admission, uh, entertainment, food, and uh, and honor their service in World War II, Korean War, and now we have in, uh, expanded our our scope to the Vietnam War. Uh, during this, this, these new years. Um, as I said, they are free, so if you know any World War II or Korean War veterans, please, um, please advise them of this. Steve has all kinds of flyers, tickets, little postcards, all kinds of stuff to try to, try to help get this event out, out here. Um, the second thing is that it's a fundraiser. Um, it's hard to do a fundraiser when you're having a whole bunch of people come for free, but we honor our veterans. And the other idea is to, is to do a fundraiser. And with that, we've had every year for the last eight years over 1,000 people attend. Um, and we have raised over $400,000, which we have given to Honor Flight Chicago. If you don't know about Honor Flight Chicago, it's an amazing organization that flies World War II and Korean War veterans and now Vietnam War veterans to Washington, D.C. for a day of honor of their service. And so we provide funds for them to do that. So um, please keep in mind it's an incredible event. And um, any questions or comments? What time is it during the day? It's, uh, the, go ahead. Yeah. It's May 2nd, it start, uh, doors open at 11, we close at 2.33 o'clock. Veterans usually get there at 9, already waiting in line for the food and everything. But uh, we start at 11, the, the ceremonies actually start at 12 noon. So the doors open at 11, the opening ceremony starts at 12 noon, and then usually done by 2.30, yeah. 2.33 o'clock, right around there. It, it's a... It's the cheapest, funnest day you can get. It's 30 bucks for a ticket. You get a Dante's and Hawthorne's Backyard uh, Barbecue. So it's an incredible day of, we have military vehicles, uh, the 10th Mountain Division, uh, we have the, the planes, um, all kinds of stuff, songs, dances, and it's all kind of geared toward, toward, toward the World War II and now focusing in on Korea and such. So thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Thank uh, you, one, one other thing. We're trying to get out to the assisted living in the nursing homes for the vets there. So if you know of any organizations, assisted living or nursing homes, that they have some vets, and if they have their own vehicle, have them come on out and contact us, and they can bring them out to the, to the event. We, we do get a couple of each time we do it, but we're trying to get out the word more and more to the nursing homes and to the assistant livings and the independent livings and that type of stuff. All right, I got plenty of flyers downstairs. Anybody wants some, um, just contact us. Great. Thanks, Steve, and thanks, Rich. And I know, Rich, you have a second item you would like to address us about. So thank you, Steve. Thank, thank you, Steve. you for all the good work you thank do for the vets. Thank you, thank you. Rich Jorgensen thank on you. another matter. Since, uh, since I'm here, I want to make sure that everybody in the county board is aware that yesterday we had a major public safety event. Um, we closed down a 44-year-old murder yesterday. And uh, the 
the agencies involved in this were the state's attorney's office, the coroner's office, sheriff's crime lab, and the court system in conjunction with Lyle PD and uh, Woodridge PD. Um, through a no-quit attitude, a 44-year-old cold case was opened through modern science of DN new DNA type of phenotyping and that we were able to identify a, a perpetrator who was not even on the radar in this rape and murder from 44 years ago. Uh, each department uh, went beyond the call of duty and we solved a murder where Pam Maurer, a 16-year-old girl who was raped and murdered and left on the side of the road, was the case is closed. We know for sure that the, who the murderer is. Uh, due to karma, he got into a fight and accidentally stabbed himself in the groin and has been dead for a long time. Uh, family has been notified and have been put at peace and the community is uh, notified of, of, of this murder. So I just want to say that every one of these departments involved are JPS departments. I want to thank our Chairman Grant Eckhoff for uh, your support and for the county board support to all of us who are able to uh, go this extra mile. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, sure. Just a quick question. Yes. Um, the news reports were saying that this gentleman was probably responsible for other murders as well. How does that look? I mean, well, he, he, it's, it's a great opening of a door. So just to, to tell you a little bit more, if I can, about it, the amazing thing was that, that through the DNA that was on yeah. Pam's body and, and the modern techniques involved in DNA evidence, they were actually able to backtrack to a photograph. And if you saw the front page of the, of the Tribune today is, has the pictures of his, of his um, high school yearbook picture and the DNA created picture, and they're virtually identical. It is, wow. it is astounding. And they actually thought that it was another guy who was also a dead and also was a jerk. And, but it wasn't, it was this guy. And so through that evidence, then we went to court and got an exhumation order and exhumed this body to get the proper DNA that we needed and actually absolutely proved that this is the person who killed her. Um, through that, we, we also know that this person probably killed an, another lady, and, and obviously, the, and the fight that he was in when he accidentally stabbed himself, he killed another person. So this is a person who's killed multiple people. We're hoping and thinking that this will open the door for other, uh, solving other murders that are out there as cold cases. It's a really incredible story. So I wanted you to make sure you knew that, that story. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jorgensen. Any other? Thank you so much for your service. Uh, moving right along on our public comment, we have Ken Flory here. Ken Flory, welcome. Good morning, Chairman Crowen, uh, board, county board members. My name is Ken Flory from Robin Schwartz. I'm here to speak on item 10B in support of a 10 family, uh, 10 home single family detached development in unincorporated Oak Brook Terrace. Uh, this completes the Brookshire development uh, that was started many years ago, and the petition is supported by the City of Oak Brook Terrace and the Brookshire Homeowners Association. Uh, with me, I have the developer, Mr. Alex Hurd, and uh, we will be available for any questions. And we ask for your support and approval. Thank, thank you, Chairman Crowman. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's nice of you to be here and make yourself available to folks. Thank you. Um, Karen Rugg. First thing I want to address today is, I don't know, five months ago, I asked you to please make available a correct map for the citizens of DuPage County. And you still haven't done it because this is the map my husband printed out yesterday. You haven't touched it. In my journey with you, I met a man, Marty, one of the rangers at the Forest Preserve District. He's a very kind, conscientious man. He goes out of his way. He's called me a couple times. He says, Karen, I know a lot of people find you to be a thorn in their side, but if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't know what was going on. 
So they drained the pipe of tree roots that was supposed to solve the problem in the swamp. It hasn't solved it. But anyways, he contacted me again, and he actually got some men out there to clean up some of the weeds and the garbage, the beer bottles, the cans, the plastic, the pill jars, wet diapers. So this was my letter to Marty before Christmas. Dear Marty, my journey with the county started over three years ago at the DuPage Water Management Meeting. I presented both videos and comments to the board led by Chairman Jim Zay. Sadly, he did nothing, nor did any other board members. Being extremely frustrated by their lack of concern, I took my mission to the DuPage County Board, led by Chairman Dan Cronin. I grabbed him over here somehow. He was with a group of people. And uh, he viewed the film briefly, standing by observant participants. He told me he was a quick study and was pulled away by a director. And their director said, there's people leaving, important people. She didn't use the word important, I'll say. But they're leaving. You've got to come. You've got to come. So he never saw the rest of the film. He never saw the rest of the video. And he did say something like, oh, they shouldn't have built a nursing home there. I don't know if you remember that, but I do. And I said, that nursing home was built before you put your road near Berman, your sidewalk. So he never reconnected with me on a personal level. He only heard my plea for help during my three-minute presentation at the podium. This went on for three years. Three elected officials from my district, Mr. Pachowski, Mr. Sam Tornatoni, Mrs. Selma, from my district, never bothered to do a thing. You got all your vote for me signs all over even Park Road, but you won't do a thing or lift a finger. So, anyways, there's three very, very kind people here. First, Mr. Noonan. Not only did he see what was going on at my home, the nursing home three doors down, he went for a ride with me in my car and saw all the things of issue. And you can't deny there were issues. Then, Mr. Hart, I caught him outside. Please, please come and see what's going on. He came. I asked Mr. Noonan. I asked Mr. Hart. He called me. He said, oh, Mr. Elliott's coming. Is that OK? More the merrier. And then I met your friend Tom. Very nice man. Thank you. So anyways, the men from my district and the woman that I voted for, I thought there'd be a difference with some women here. No difference. The same old, same old. Um, Ms. Rugg, you've yes. exceeded the three minutes, I want to finish this. Well, we have Marty, a rule thank here, you. and we would ask that you respect thank our Thank you for rules. taking concern for the safety of the patients, the visitors, and the numerous health care professionals to heart. Also, thank you for getting the tree roots pulled out of the pipes so proper drainage of the swamp would start once again. I know this is not your job description list, but you are the only person that didn't look the other way and turn your back on a bad situation. I task the citizens deserve better. Last Monday, my husband and I drove over to the site and saw that, as you, pro as you promised, some of the property has been cleared. The flooding from my task in DuPage Forest Preserve District has not been solved yet, but hopefully with your kind and understanding attitude, there may be promises, promises for the future. You and you alone, Marty, have made a difference in the world. The men and women at the county board never bothered to do a thing, even though they saw the evidence of a serious problem. Thank you. Karen Rugg. Thank you very much. Appreciate your remarks. Oh, yeah. That concludes our public comment. Uh, we're going to move on to the order of consent. I'll entertain a motion to approve items A through U. Is there a motion? A there's been a motion by Mr. Eckhoff, seconded over here. Who was that? Mr. DeCiani to approve items A through U on consent. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Zay? Aye. Chaplin? Aye. Covert? Aye. Desart? Aye. DeCiani? Aye. Eckhoff? Aye. Elliott? Aye. Hart? Aye. Healy? Krajewski? Aye. Larson? Aye. Noonan? Aye. Ozog? Aye. Chowski? Aye. Renahan, 
Rutledge, Aye. Selman, Aye. Tornatore, Aye. 17. Thank you, Madam Clerk. On the order of county board, Mr. James Zay. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. On committee update, uh, just on this overnight travel, uh, we do have a total of nine board members going to NACO, which is great. Uh, for almost $20,000. Mr. Healy is being paid for by ISACO. Uh, my only issue is that uh, um, we should probably have the total there, just not what it is per person. And I would hope those board members would, since half the board's going to be gone, we do have county board committee meetings on that first Tuesday that they would talk to those committee chairs to make sure they have quorum for those meetings. So with that, I uh, move on authorization overnight travel for eight county board members to attend NACO Legislative Conference in Washington, D.C. It's been a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. No. DeCiani. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. Elliott. Aye. Hart. Aye. Healy. Krajewski. Aye. Larson. Aye. Noonan. Aye. Ozog. Aye. Pachowski. Aye. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Salmon, Tornatori. Sixteen. Okay, the resolution is adopted. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Zay. Thank you, Madam Clerk. On to the order of finance, Member Bob Larson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Move to combine agenda items A through D, which are all acceptance and appropriations of various grants. But a motion and a second, Madam Clerk. Please call the roll. That's just a to combine, Mr. Chairman. Oh. There's been a motion to combine. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The items are combined. Please Thank proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Then I would move approval of the following items, which are all acceptance and appropriations of various grants. Uh, first, FIR 3420, which is the State Court Improvement Program grant in the amount of $9,900. Second is FIR 2920, the uh, DuPage Care Center Foundation, uh, Foundation Coordinator grant in the amount of $30,454. Uh, FIR 3020, which is the uh, DuPage Care Center Foundation Music Therapy Grant in the amount of $40,274. And FIR 3120, the DuPage Care Center Foundation Recreational Therapy Grant in the amount of $21,280. Second. A motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Larson. Aye. Noonan. Aye. Ozog. Aye. Bachowski. Aye. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Selman. Tortori. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Covert, Aye. Desart, DeCiani, Eckhoff, Aye. Healy, I'm sorry, Elliott, Aye. Hart, Aye. Healy, Grzewski, 17. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Larson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Move approval of FIR 3220 annual financial contribution to the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning, amount of 36,349. And then uh, uh, move approval of FIR 3620 placing names on payroll. Please. Leave is granted, Mr. Larson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Move approval of FIR 3520, budget transfers of various companies and accounting units. Leave is granted, Mr. Larson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Finally, move approval of FIP 2920, approval of contract to Office Depot. Leave is granted. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. you. Thank you, Member Larson. A fine report. Now we move on to the order of development. Uh, Mr. Sam Tornatore. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Uh, under committee update, uh, item 10A is a resolution to approve the sale of county property. Uh, this is a property uh, that many of us were at a few, maybe a year and a half ago or so, with a demolition under the county's clean and lean program. Not only did we take that property, demolish the building, uh, but we were able to purchase it, clear all the liens, and ultimately sell it and sell it for a profit. And money that we were able to uh, retrieve from that is going back into the neighborhood development program or the clean and lean program. And I did want to thank Paul Haas, Jim Strand, the Kottmeyer, all our building and zoning the public work people for what they did and the sale of that property. And it shows uh, not only our uh, various uh, uh, people working together here, but uh, doing so in a way that uh, not only has taken a blighted piece of property from our county, but turned it into not only something good for the community, but um, we made a little money on the deal as well, so we can continue to do this, and I wanted to thank all of them as well. Um, to that end, I'd move on DCR 2820. This is a resolution approving the sale of county-owned property at 22 West 126 Valley View, Valley View Drive in Glen Ellen. It's been a motion and a second. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, please call the roll. 
Tornatori. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Deciani. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. Elliot. Aye. Hart. Aye. Healy. Krajewski. Aye. Larson. Aye. Noonan. Aye. Ozog. Aye. Pachowski. Aye. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Selman. Aye. 17. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Tornatore. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of DC 05-20 Ordinance Z 1935 to approve zoning relief for conditional uses for a planned development. Oh, okay. Um, so let the record reflect that Member Elliott has left the room. There's been a motion and a second with respect to item. DCO 5-20, is that the item? Yes, right? it is. Okay, so there's been a motion and a second. Elliot's out of the room. Um, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Tornatori. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Deciani. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. Elliot. Hart. Aye. Healy. Krajewski. Aye. Larson. Aye. Noonan. Aye. Ozog. Aye. Pachowski. Aye. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Selman. Aye. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tortatori. Uh, please proceed. Move approval of DC 06-20, Ordinance Z 1967, to approve a variation to increase the height of a detached garage. There's been a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Tornatori. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Deciani. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. Elliott. Aye. Hart. Aye. Healy. Kajewski, Larson, Aye. Noonan, Aye. Ozog, Bachowski, Renahan, Aye. Rutledge, Aye. Selman, Aye. 17. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Turnitore. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of DC 08-20, Ordinance 71973, Zoning Hearing Officers. Approval of a variation to reduce the front yard, corner yard, and rear yard setback. Leave is granted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To move approval of DC 09-20, Ordinance C-1974, Zoning Hearing Officer's approval of a conditional use to allow an existing deck to remain. Leave is granted, Mr. Tornatore. Mr. Chairman, to move approval of DC 010-20, Ordinance C-1975, Zoning Hearing Officer's approval of a conditional use to allow an existing shed to remain. Leave is granted, Thank Mr. Tornatore. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Move approval of DC 011-20, Ordinance C-19. 80, uh, Zoning Hearing Officer's approval of variation to increase the height of a detached accessory building and square feet. Okay, so uh, the grant left. Uh, so would the record reflect that Mr. Eckhoff has left the room? We are, oh my God. Um, so in any event, uh, yeah, so there's been a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Tornatory. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin, Aye. Covert, Aye. Desart, Deciani, Eckhoff, Elliott, Aye. Hart, Aye. Healy, Krajewski, Larson, Aye. Noonan, Aye. Ozog, Pachowski, Renahan, Aye. Rutledge, Aye. Selman, Aye. 17. Thank you, <clears throat> Madam Clerk. Mr. Tornatore. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of DC 012-20, Ordinance C-1981, the Zoning Hearing Officer's approval of a conditional Aye. use. And a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Tornatori. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Covert. Aye. Sart. Aye. Deciani. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. Elliot. Aye. Hart. Aye. Healy. Here. Aye. Krajewski. Aye. Larson. Aye. Noonan. Aye. Ozog. Aye. Pachowski. Aye. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Selman. Aye. 18. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Tornatore. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of DC 013-20, Ordinance C 1982, the Zoning Hearing Officer's approval of variation as well as a conditional use to allow an existing shed to remain. Leave is granted, Mr. Tornatore. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of DC 014-20, Ordinance C 1984, the Zoning Hearing Officer's approval of a variation. Leave is granted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman, and finally, I move approval of DC 07-20, Ordinance Z 1970, Zoning Hearing Officer's approval of a variation in conditional use. There's been a motion and a second request for leave. Leave is granted. Thank you, Thank Mr. Turner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll report. in a minute. Yeah, no worries about it. I'll come get it. Um, on to the order of health and human services. Uh, Member Pete DeCiani. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, on a committee update, uh, a, a resolution that this board unanimously passed uh, calling out the state on Medicaid for autism. Um, 
uh, that bill, which we actually uh, supported, uh, passed, but we have not had implementation yet. So we are watching and working with the Secretary of DHS to uh, get this pushed forward. As we have but money in the budget, we have legislation passed, uh, and we are urging the state to finalize their issues with the federal government to, uh, to get the Medicaid uh, in order and getting uh, our kids in therapy. Uh, with that, um, um, uh, I'll be watching it closely and keep the board in, in, in the loop as to what's happening and see if we have to take any further action to push our, uh, our state folks to, to do the job. Um, with that said, I'd ask for a motion to combine items A through F on the Health and Human Services uh, agenda. And a motion and a second to combine items A through F. All those in favor say aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The items are combined. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move on HHSP 1320. Uh, it's a contract purchase order of optimum management. Uh, for technical assistance and consultation services for uh, the page uh, continuum of care in the amount of 30000 I move on HHSP 1420 for Chicago United Industries, LTD, the furnished and delivery and, uh, energy efficient appliances, the amount of $48,095. I move on HHSP 1520, recommendation for a contract purchase order for Music Speaks, LLC, for music therapy for our care center in the amount of $48,124. I move on item HHSP 1620 uh, to accelerated care plus leasing uh, for the DuPage Care Center for uh, physical therapy in the amount of $46,467.36. I move on HHS uh, P1720 uh, contract for Adv uh, Advocare Systems for low uh, air loss and bariatric mattresses for our care center in about 95000 And lastly, I move on item HHSP 1820 to McKesson Medical Surgical for prime supplier of general medical uh, surgical supplies to our uh, care center in the amount of $295,000. Thank you. There's been a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Yanni. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. Elliott. Aye. Hart. Aye. Healy. Aye. Krajewski. Aye. Larson, Aye. Noonan, Aye. Ozak, Pachowski, Renahan, Aye. Rutledge, Aye. Selman, Aye. Tornatori, Aye. Zay, Aye. Chaplin, Aye. Covert, Aye. Desart, Aye. 18. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. DeCiani. Thank you, uh, Chairman. And lastly, I have items of travel, items G through O. I'd ask for a motion to combine this. So there's been a motion and a second to combine items G through O. Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The items are combined. Please proceed. Thank you, Chairman. I make a motion on authorization to travel in the amount of $1,850 uh, to uh, for community services for database uh, report specialists to attend the National Human Services uh, Data Consortium. I motion uh, on uh, item J, authorization to travel in the amount of $1,850 uh, for community services. Seems like you're missing some here. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. You missed G and you missed I'm so sorry. I, I apologize. <laughs> uh, I move on item G, uh, authorization to travel uh, in the amount of $340 grant funded uh, for community services to the regional Edmondson quarterly meeting in Springfield. I move on item H, motion to travel in the amount of $1,850 uh, for community services homeless management information system manager uh, to attend the National uh, Services Data Consortium. I move on item I, uh, motion to travel on, uh, for in the amount of $1,850 for community services data and report specialist to attend the, the same conference. <laughs> I move on to item J, uh, authorization to travel in the amount of 1850 uh, for another community service uh, person uh, to attend that same conference. And lastly, lastly uh, excuse me, authorization, uh, move on to item K, authorization to cra uh, travel in the amount of $1,258, uh, grant funded for community services intake and referral coordinator to attend the results oriented management and accountability Roma conference. I move on to item L, Authorization to travel in the amount of $1,258, uh, again, for the Roma Conference for Community Services, again, grant funded. And item M, authorization to travel, the amount of $2,392 for Community Services, uh, Community Development Commissioner, to, uh, a Commission Manager to attend the National Association of County and Community in the Economic Development Leg Spring Legislative Meeting in Washington, D.C. Make a motion on item N, authorization to travel in the amount of $3,546, community services, senior community de uh, development specialist to attend the three-part rental housing development finance professional certification program. And lastly, item O, authorization to travel in the amount of $3,453 for community services, community development commission manager to attend the rental housing development finance professional certification uh, for the federal home program. Thank you. Very good. Thank you.
There's been a Thank motion you. and a second, and a request for leave. Leave is granted. Thank you, Mr. DeCiani. On to the order of judicial public safety, Mr. Grant Eckhoff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would move Thank approval you. of JPS 19-20, recommendation for approval of contract purchase order to Curry Motors for the purchase of 13 2020 Ford second. utility interceptors, two 2020 Ford utility police interceptors. It's been a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Eckhoff. Aye. Elliott. Aye. Hart. Aye. Healy. Aye. Krajewski. Aye. Larson. Aye. Noonan, Aye. Ozog, Pachowski, Renahan, Aye. Rutledge, Aye. Selman, Aye. Tornatori, Aye. Zay, Aye. Chaplin, Aye. Covert, Aye. Desart, Deciani, 18. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Rakoff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of JPS 27-20, recommendation for the approval of contract purchase order to Northeast DuPage Youth and Family Services to provide services to youth. Leave is granted. Thank you, Mr. Eckhoff. Fine report. On to the order of Public Works, Mr. James Healy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for approval of FMP 2320, contract to AP Grease Trappers to Trap Grease. A and P Grease Trappers. A and P, what did I say? You said A P. Uh, there's been a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Healy. Confused, I. <laughs> Krajewski. Larson. Yeah, I'm retiring. I don't care. <laughs> Noonan. Aye. Ozog. Aye. Pachowski. Renahan. Rutledge. Aye. Selman. Tornatori. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Giciani. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. Elliott. Aye. Hart. Aye. 18. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Healy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for approval of PWP 2220, a contract to Standard Equipment Company to furnish and deliver vector parts and services as needed. Leave is granted. Thank you, Mr. Healy. Oh. On to the order of stormwater. Uh, Mr. Jim Zay. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Move on. Okay. SMP 2820, agreement between DuPage County and Hay and Associates, professional engineering services, the amount of $85,000. It's been a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Deciani. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. Elliott. Aye. Hart. Aye. Healy. Aye. Krajewski. Aye. Larson. Aye. Noonan. Aye. Ozog. Aye. Pachowski. Aye. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Selman. Aye. Tornatori. Aye. Thank you, Madam Clerk, Mr. Zay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Move on. Authorization for Overnight Travel and Environmental Projects Coordinator to beautiful Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. Amount of $681. Second. Most favorable roll. Uh, leave is granted, Mr. Zay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Move on. Another authorization for Overnight Travel or Wetland Supervisor to travel also to Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Amount of $681. Second. Most favorable roll. Leave is granted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Zay. Uh, on to the order of technology, uh, Member Greg Hart. Chairman, I move on TEP 30-20, recommendation for the approval of a contract Tony. purchase order to the Telecom Innovations Group. Second. Been a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Hart. Aye. Healy. Aye. Krajewski. Aye. Larson. Aye. Noonan. Aye. Ozog. Aye. Chowski. Aye. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Selman. Aye. Tornatori. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Giciani. Aye. Eckhoff, Elliot, eighteen. Thank you, thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Hart, um, and thank you, County Board. On to the order of transportation, Mr. Don Pachowski. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. I'd move to approve DTR twenty six twenty integral agreement to the County of DuPage and the Village of Woodridge for sidewalk improvements. Second. Any motion and a second, Madam Clerk? Please call the roll. Pachowski. Aye. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Selman, Tornatori, Say, Aye. Chaplin, Aye. Covert, Desart, Giciani, Eckhoff, Elliott, Hart, Aye. Healy, Krajewski, Larson, Aye. Noonan, Aye. Ozog, Aye. 18. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Pachowski. Move to approve DTR 2720, an agreement between the County DuPage and Nair Woodridge LLC for financial maintenance. Leave is granted. Mr. Pachowski. Move to approve amendment to DTR 168-19 to Copenhagen Construction for drainage improvements. 
Leave is granted, Mr. Pachowski. Move to do DT 4 20 an ordinance authorizing the execution of agreement between the County DuPage and DuPage mayors and managers for improvements. Leave is granted. Move to approve DTP 2020 contract to Great USA Inc. for professional surveying services. Leave is granted. Move to approve DTP 2120, a contract to state testing LLC for professional materials testing and engineering services. Leave is granted. Motion to approve DTP 2020, a contract to Moreau Truck Equipment Inc. for a stainless steel dump bodies. Leave right. is granted. Oh, thank you. Move to approve DTP 2020, a contract to Altuck Industries Inc. for a 2024 F550. Leave is granted, Mr. And last, Pichowski. Motion to approve DTP 2620, a contract to Sutton Ford Inc. for two 2024 F550s. Second motion roll. With the super cab chassis. Uh, leave is granted. Thank you, Mr. Pachowski. Uh, on to the order of intergovernmental uh, member Mary Ozog. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Intergovernmental Committee met on Wednesday, last Thank Wednesday, you, January 8th. Uh, we enjoyed a presentation by Dave Neary, the Executive Director of the DuPage uh, Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we also discussed uh, future meeting dates for 2020. We plan to meet April 22nd, where we'll hopefully have an overview of community services. Uh, July 8th, topic to be decided. And then October 7th, where we will, do, we will have a legislative update. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate that. Mr. Healy, would you have a public Pardon me? Do we have a public hearing? Wait, what's the you state your inquiry? What's, what's Do your... we have a public hearing today? A, a court reporter. <laughs> no. Uh, so um, the clerk is asked uh, if uh, I would entertain as the presiding officer a little clerical support up here at the uh, dais, and I, I said that's fine with me. I'm here to work together. Okay, uh, so we had a fine report from Member Ozog on intergovernmental. Um, so that moves us to the next order of business entitled Old Business. Old Business, anybody old, seeking old business? Anybody? Any, Mr. Zay, on the order of old Thank business. You, Mr. Chairman. Not old. You know, I just wanted to address Mrs. Rugg was here and you know, I know she's been coming for a while, but there was a lot left out in her uh, little report. Uh, you know, staff has met with Mrs. Rugg over the years and talked to her and been out to her house. Uh, myself and Member Noonan have gone out to her house. Uh, I've taken her in my car and I've driven her. Driven uh, her? Driven her? Driven her. That's a new word. I'm trying new, new grammar in the new year. I've driven her all around Itasca to look at the things that she talked about. Our staff's been out there. I've had meetings with the mayor of Itasca, herself, her neighbors, and the police chief of Itasca was there. Um, I know the chairman has asked our staff about this situation. I've Repeatedly. talked to members Pachowski, uh, Tornatore, and Salmon about what we've done out there. Um, you know, we've talked to her. She just doesn't like the answers she's getting. I mean, this property, we've been out there, we've talked to her neighbors, she doesn't like that there's redevelopment in her neighborhood. She has, she tells us that her great-grandfather put a drain in this property 50 years ago, which means there's always been a flooding issue on this property. She backs up to the Forest Preserve. I'm glad to see the Forest Preserve is getting involved because a lot of this is maintenance issues that the Forest Preserve has to do because it's their property. So I don't want to think that it's turned a deaf eye. I know our staff's been out there many times. Deaf, deaf ear. Eye. Deaf eye? I'm killing it today. Deaf eye and a killing blind ear. A blind ear, too. There we go. So I just don't want you to think that we're not, that she's coming here and no one's paying attention to her. We are. She just doesn't like the answers she's getting. This is, she's in Incorporated Itasca. This is Itasca's issue to deal with. We have met with Itasca many a times. And again, she just doesn't like the answers. So when her saying she's not, no one's answering her, they are, she just doesn't like the answers. So thank you. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Zay. Anyone else on the order of, uh, of old business member chaplain? Thank you, Chairman Cronin. So um, last year, I emailed you about that committee to um, look at our committees and see the if committee we Committee to study committees. Yes, the committee to study committees. Or, you know, if we do it as a committee of the whole or something, but I would really like that to be addressed. Because sure. uh, I think it's very important. We have a lot of committees. I know a lot of people 
we don't have time for a lot of our committees, so if we can maybe consolidate some of them or whatever. I think it's an important issue to, to do yeah, that. Yeah, no, so I, I mean, really I agree appreciate with you. Us getting, I agree you know, with getting, you. getting on that. And then also, um, the study for the recorder's office, I think you mentioned was going to be in the spring. Um, but I would like to see that kind of pushed ahead, too. And I'm wondering if we're going to be going out for RFQ, request for qualifications on this, and maybe what the we are. scope of the um, study is. We want it to be include. competitively yes, bid. Yes, thank you. Um, and so, yeah, we had one person, one organization respond. I didn't. I wasn't satisfied. I want to have more than one. Okay. So, yeah, it's we're going about it with all deliberate speed. Okay. But we're also being thorough and conscientious yeah. about it. Okay. Thank you. That was concluded. Thank you. Thanks. Anything further? Anyone else? Mr. DeCiani on the order of old business. Yeah, I want to give a shout out. We had a coroner talk about the cold case that was cracked yesterday. Uh, not only the coroner, but our sheriff's office uh, right. really, I think, stepped up with technology and uh, and found out uh, and resolved a heinous crime that uh, uh, was of a, of a woman. You know, and and uh, I think it brought closure to this family. Uh, but this technology that our sheriff's office and our crime lab has been implementing. I think it's state of the art and new, and and uh, and that's that's uh, kudos to Jim for his stepping up and making these uh, these changes and efforts. And uh, I just want to give a shout out to, to, to the sheriff Mendrick for his uh, his leadership and for using cutting edge technology to uh, fight crime. Thank you. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I agree with you. Yeah, that our crime lab I think is the envy of the whole maybe across the nation. It's one of the most uh, sophisticated, uh, effective uh, crime labs in the business, without a doubt. Anyone else seeking recognition? Mr. Hart. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I neglected to mention this during committee report for technology, but I want to uh, thank our technology uh, staff, especially Don Collarson, who um, worked with all of us over the last couple months to ensure that closed captioning is actually added to our meeting uh, videos that are online after after the meeting concludes. So that is now officially up and running and live and uh, on the website. So Don, I want to thank you and your team for all the help. I know it was an easy uh, effort to get it to where it is today, but uh, appreciate all the help. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Further discussion? Anyone seeking recognition on the order of old business? Seeing none, hearing none, we move to the order of new business. Member Desart. When I was a newspaper, when I was a reporter, in every medium. Um, we could never talk about suicide. We could never mention suicide on the air. Um, it was thought that, su unless it was a major celebrity like a Kate Spade, but it was thought that suicide was um, contagious and facts just don't bear that out. So Neighborville City Councilman John Crumman and I um, held a panel discussion yesterday, uh, community conversation, suicide awareness, and the path toward hope. And it was excellent. I'd like to thank Lori Carnahan from the DuPage County Health Department who came out and spoke. And one of the um, passionate, interesting things she talked about was, was casserole illnesses. Like if you had a heart attack, your neighbors would all bring you casseroles. If you broke your leg, your neighbors would bring you food and put it in your refrigerator and wish you well. But not so much for mental health issues like depression or PTSD. And we need to um, shed a light on those, those issues as well to prevent um, suicide. And I'd like to thank everybody who came out. Leanne came out. Thank you for being there. And we had a wonderful, uh, Mary Jo was there as well. We had a wonderful discussion. And I just want to thank our panelists and everybody who came out for this conversation on suicide. I thought it was important. Very good. Thank you. Further discussion on the order of new business. Anyone seeking recognition on the order of new business? Seeing none, hearing none, um, our next order of business is executive session. I am informed that we do, in fact, have an item uh, uh, that we need to address rather briefly on the order of pending litigation. So uh, pursuant to Open Meetings Act 5 ILCS 120-2C11 on pending litigation, I make a motion that we organize ourselves into executive session. It's been seconded by Mr. Elliott. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Chaplain. Colbert, Aye. Desart, Deciani, Eckhoff, Aye. Elliott, Aye. Hart, Aye. Healy, Aye. Grajewski, you said I, Grajewski, Aye. okay, Larson, Aye. Noonan, Aye. Ozog, Pachowski, Renahan, Aye. Rutledge, Aye. Selman, Tornatory, Zay, Seventeen. Thank you. Okay, so we have a quorum. We can organize ourselves in executive session. We'll give the folks a couple minutes to... Uh huh? 
Huh? Sure, go ahead. So we're good to go. Before I entertain a motion to adjourn, Mr. DeCiani has a very important announcement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to uh, uh, give congratulations to York High School, the Special Olympics basketball team. We'll be representing DuPage County in the state uh, competition this March. Uh, they qualified. Uh, they actually beat Willowbrook and uh, Leiden in, in the districts uh, uh, on Cicero. Hundreds of teams are out there, and uh, uh, York did great, and it was great to see the, the, the kids with special needs uh, uh, attain. How many points did Brianna score? Brianna had eight <laughs> in one game. There you go. There you so go. anyway, no, she had a great, great series. But the kids just stepped up, and uh, we had uh, Willowbrook gave us. We lost to Willowbrook last week in overtime. So uh, to come back and win it in districts uh, was awesome, and it's great to see a DuPage County Very team. Very good. Uh, Congratulations. Down Thank you. Any other, anyone else with an announcement? So yes, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn, but a motion and a second to adjourn this meeting to Tuesday, January 28th at 10 a.m. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those nay, the ayes have it, meeting adjourned.